Okay, and good afternoon and welcome to the Business and Technology Show. Um, we're here this afternoon with, I'm Alistair Dickinson, I'm the CEO of my CRM group and Maximize. Um, I'm joined in the studio with Poppy and Mike. Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, but at that point, Poppy usually waves at the camera. Yeah, so I'm trying to see which today. camera we are on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and our special guest this afternoon is Matt Gregg from... Nosy Design. Nosy Design. Nosy Design, yes. Excellent stuff. I'm very good at getting the company name wrong, yeah. so it's, it's, I, I, I spent hours, well not hours, but... You know what, when I first introduction, yeah. when I first started the business, I called it Nosy Catfish. All oh, right. Yeah. I don't know why, I think yeah. it was one of those kind of Google generators. Yeah. And <laughs> then the catfish, I think, connotated wrong, so I ended up getting rid of it and... Yeah. Design just came in. Design, excellent. But if anyone okay. asks me, I've got no idea why it's called Nosy Design. <laughs> it is what it is. It is. It is what it is. Yeah, it's a bit. We were when we were naming Maximize. Actually, we hadn't actually got a name for it, mm. but we wanted just to find a word that wasn't on Google. Yeah. So it's just like find a word that talks about maps. Yeah. Anyway, so this afternoon's agenda. Um, we've got a, a fairly packed agenda. We've got a good Q and A, uh, and Matt has kindly come in to answer those questions about his business, how he started, how he's progressing, um, and what he can do for businesses, not just on the Isle of Wight, um, but around, uh, I assume you're national, I assume you're helping people nationally, you're doing Yes, work. we yeah. are, yeah. So we're going to be doing, uh, having those conversations and I'll be asking those kind of questions. Um, obviously, uh, you can ask questions online. Um, Poppy, do you wanna just cover a bit on that? Yeah, uh, so we are live at the moment, but, um you know, we will be. This will be a recording that will be on YouTube. Um, so, if you're watching live, do uh, give us any questions. Uh, Matt's happy to ask any questions, um, or any one of us any questions. You know, just write them in the live chat, and uh, we'll be answering them as we go along. Try to. I'm not always good at that, but we, no, no, <laughs> we try. We're, 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 we're not exactly a professional <laughs> broadcasting outfit. And if anybody, like, yeah, if anybody asks me how I get my Head so shiny. Yes, I'm not answering the question. <laughs> We've spent about 20 minutes talking about hair transplants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so it's, uh, it's, it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Mm. Right. Okay. Let's get on with the Q and A. So, Matt, um, can you tell us a bit about yourself, uh, your background, where you've come from, where you're going, what's you know what's happening today for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, my journey kind of began when I was nine years old, and I moved to England from Poland. Right. So I couldn't speak any English and <laughs> moved to the good old Isle of Wight and we, we, you know, we moved straight from Poland and stayed on the island ever since. Right, okay. It took me probably about three or four years to get a grasp of English fully. I was the only Polish person in my school, which was quite, quite interesting. Yeah. And actually I think probably the only foreign person. So I went, right. to, I went to Ride Academy yeah. and eventually coding came a thing for me. I was good at maths, mm -hmm. so you know, I, I did my maths A-levels, my further maths, and whilst doing that, I ended up you know, learning a bit of HTML, yeah. CSS, PHP, JavaScript, and it all kind of formed together to one of my friends eventually saying to me, look mate, you can do a bit of coding, you're great at maths, how about you make me a website? Yeah. So I made him a website, it was terrible. <laughs> It's it a bit was like, a bit like my first website. Uh, it was one of those websites that if you go on your mobile phone, if this is your desktop, it still looks the same on mobile phone, and you have to kind of scroll past it <laughs> to get to the other side. And instead of going to uni, I was originally going to do astrophysics at Exeter. Right. Okay. My friend persuaded me to work with him in a company called I'll Create. Yes. Okay. So Robert and I were working on there for about a year and a half. And then he progressed on to some of his other stuff. So he was always into 3D printing and engineering. Yeah. And I ended up moving to hospitality. Right. So I became an assistant complex manager at Nodes Point Holiday Park. Okay. And whilst there, it was again a similar situation where my complex manager said to me, Matt, we've got this event coming up. You know, can you design us a flyer? Because <laughs> I can barely press the mouse, mouse keyboard. You know? And I designed a flyer, so that's yeah. kind of where well, the marketing, I suppose, began. Uh, then I moved into social media. Uh, another venue in hospitality asked me to start doing their social media. So I started managing number 64s in Shanklin, which is a bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and started to slowly form a package. So it's just from websites. Yeah. We then moved into promotional print, then to social media management. And with social media management and websites, people wanted videos. Yeah. So we bought some video equipment. And I started working with Nosy Design on a self-employed basis to start off with whilst having a full-time job yeah. 
and eventually I moved into kind of part-time nosy and part-time working for yeah. AGK Isle of Wight where I was a digital tutor so I would visit people you know over the age of 50 in libraries at their homes teach yeah. them how to install the NatWest banking app and then they'll forget yeah. the next week so they'll have to do it <laughs> again <laughs> <laughs> so you could, got, you could have just recorded a video and just sent them that, but then they may not be yeah. able to watch it. Yeah. But that experience was was useful for me because I did some social media training sessions with yeah. people. So I did some stuff for uh, people over the age of fifty who want to start a business. So I helped them with the marketing, and that helped me to understand the delivery aspect oh, right. of how to do training. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was actually f with Fiona from the chamber. Yeah, so mm -hmm. she ever watches yeah, it. I, Thanks. Yeah, I, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Wrong camera. <laughs> Um, now I always find training quite difficult because um, you know, my background is very technical. Um, I, I was an electrical engineer. Um, I had big action. I've mentioned this before, um, and so I kind of went. I realised I could code. You know, I was sat in, in college. And I can do this. Could this, can, this, can you not now? You know, <laughs> no, no, I, I've not actually done anything for about ten years. Um, and, you know, the guys are far smarter than I am. So I just, I just, I tend to do my my. I, you know, I stopped coding and started learning how to do marketing and social and all of those things. And I've got it spectacularly wrong over the years, and I'm now getting the grasp. It's taken me ten years to actually understand how to engage properly on on, on kind of social media and not not just use it as a kind of loud hailer of like I've got a thing, buy a thing, I've got a thing. Yeah, one one thing which I found straight away is people try to use social media as a billboard yeah. instead of as a telephone. Yeah. So that, you know, like just, like you just yeah. said, instead of getting people value and conversing with them, it's Here's my stuff, go and buy it. Oh, it's only 99. Yeah. And yeah. it's just not the right kind of approach. It's not, no, and, and, and the world is changing. I mean, I've just read a brilliant book that kind of basically concentrated everything down for me and said, no, this is how you do it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I'll share that book with you. Talking about book, no? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that book. <laughs> um, the, um, you know, one thing that I always find kind of interesting, I, I like working with businesses, you know, you know, the, from a startup point of view, I mean, you've been going about a year, as you said before, before we came on air. Um, and some businesses that have been, you know, kind of 10 years in the going, or even 20 years, you know, and it's, it's why, why, what made you think, you know, what, you woke up that morning and thought, do you know what, I want my own business, I want my own destiny. What, can, can you kind of, you know, expand on that and just give us some sort of background of what you thought, you know, you didn't go to university, you kind of went, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work, um, what at the point did you think I could actually do this for myself? Because there's obviously all the challenges in running a business. So yeah, yeah I, we went limited in September last year. So we've as a limited company just under a year now, right. and I employed my first member of staff at the beginning of September, who was Alex. He's currently in America. Yeah, he hopefully he flies back. So, <laughs> uh, and then our first apprentice came on, and the second one. So at the moment we're, we're a team of five people. Oh, okay. And you had someone join today, didn't you? Or, or uh, yesterday, actually, yesterday. yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can never pronounce the name. It's Fia, but with an accent, so it's not actually said Fia. Yeah. But yeah, our new apprentice for IT started yesterday. We're currently based um, above Top Mops and Sandown, yeah. near the Heights, at Melville Street. But what I found really quickly is I like working with people in the aspect that I can both learn from them and teach them something. Sure. And a lot of the time, <coughs> The only way to do that properly is if you employ those people, because then you you have the you know full control. Mm -hmm. When I was working uh, at a holiday park, there was always restrictions. I could never kind of do the things which I wanted to. Things had to be done a certain way. Yeah. And I you know I, I thought hey okay so I I like doing websites. I've done that in the past, and I really like interacting with people, which I found in the hospitality role. What can I do that bring that, that brings those two aspects together? Sure. A marketing company. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm able to interact both with you know clients. I'm able to interact in networking events, yeah. and I'm able to develop and help my staff to to improve. Sure. I mean Ollie from uh, from Nosy just started in January this year, and he progressed onto a full time role in April. Right. So he he's one of our you know chief video guys at the moment, and it's those kind of interactions which I think make business worthwhile. Sure. Yeah. If, you, if you walk into business thinking, I want to make money, you're never going to, you know, it's not going to last, in my opinion, because that, that drive kind of goes, whereas I, if you're motivated by other things... I, I, I would agree, actually. You know, I mean, one of the reasons um, I've only ever worked f being an employee, hmm. you know, for someone for two years, um, and that's, that's my whole of my career. Um, and I, uh, I'm not a good employee. Um, because a bit like you said, I don't like doing it 
when someone says, we do it that way, and I'm like, yeah, but I could do it better than that. <laughs> you know, I want to do it differently. And so, you know, that's why it always interests me because, you know, everybody starts a business. Sometimes they just start a business for a job. Sometimes they start a business for, you know, bringing on employees and building a culture that can actually deliver some great value. Um, and sometimes it's just actually financially motivated. You know, you want to be the next big thing and you want to kind of just grow, 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 get investor funding and off you get. Um, so, I, you know, I find it fascinating. One thing for me was... I started a business when I was 20 yeah. and I realised I could literally muck up for the next 10 years and I would still have 50 years of my life yeah, yeah. to pursue a job as an employee if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. So I would, I would literally feel guilty if I didn't give myself that shot yeah, yeah. and try to start something on my own. You know, realising that I can go back to a normal job anytime I want. Yeah, mm-hmm. See, I went to university late so I, didn't, you know, I, was, I was still partying all the way through my 20s. Um, and didn't really work until I think my first contract job was when I was 27 so you've got plenty of time <laughs> <laughs> I actually um, you said I didn't go to uni but I started doing open uni so oh, I started, started doing yeah. engineering yeah. with open uni whilst still working at the holiday park and eventually I got to the point where I thought okay the business is doing well enough for me to now go full time do I actually need this degree mm. which I depending on the profession obviously if you're a doctor or something which you need that training for mm. But for someone who does marketing, where it's constantly evolving, and if I do my you know degree stuff for f- three four years, will I learn more from doing a degree in marketing, or will I learn more from doing three four years in a marketing job yeah. mm-hmm. and doing my own research yeah. and has been more motivated to learn and that kind of stuff? Well, from doing a marketing degree, I have a marketing degree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so don't be you know, <laughs> you know maybe. <laughs> yeah. But um, I feel that. The same. I feel that you know, actually working working in marketing over what I learned in my degree, you know, you have the chance to put into work what you did learn, but you learn so much more doing it, and just you know, as it evolves, going with it, and you know, that's and one one of the main things for a young person to consider as well is when you do a three-year degree you have to mm-hmm. you have to learn certain things that's it whereas if you spend three years learning something to master your own craft you can choose what you're going to learn exactly mm-hmm. to match where you want to be and where your goals are yeah mm-hmm. I, I mean i did I, I loved my degree experience obviously i was a little bit older and i'd always recommend um university education not because you're going to be job ready and not because you can learn you know against a, a, a curriculum but it's that experience of being in a, in a university, you're away from home in most cases, you know, you get to, for the first time, stand on your own two feet and, and, and actually live your life and it it, it, be, it makes a person a lot more confident um, and, and I, I see a difference of, of people that we employ that they come with, a, you know, a BTEC or a, a degree that they've been away and learned and they're ready to learn. Mm. It gives them that sort of, <coughs> sort of, I know how to learn now, so I can sort of say, hey, go and do this, and they go, right, I know where to research that, instead of saying, oh, how do I do it? You know, you know I, the, the internet's there, go and, go, and, go and make it for yourself, you know, it's mm. like all the information. I think we've got so much information around us now that it's, I think that's why... I suppose one of, one of the positives of a degree is the fact that you're focused on what you're learning. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> you have to learn something through the internet. One, the information sources could be wrong, and mm. two... So much choice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think the problem, is the, obviously, the, the problem with degree education now is is cost. So you know, do you actually build that cost up? Mm. And, and, and forty grand later, mm-hmm. it's it's more than yeah. that now, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. Let's not talk about how much. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's <laughs> let's <laughs> not. It's uh, <laughs> it's very scary. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's move on. Um, can you? Uh, what I'm going to ask you is it kind of gives a bit of an overview of the company and what your sort of focus is right now. So we're going to look at the kind of key objectives, the type of services that you offer, if you can give a bit more detail on that, how those services help customers. So you know, you've got business A and they might want some video or some social engagement. Um, and what's your end goal? You're, where you are now, you're, you're 12 months in um, as being a limited company. What's, what's the next two years, three years look like and where do you want to kind of get to? Absolutely. So, if we start off with some of your key objectives, mm-hmm. yeah, if you want to say, well, look, you know, I want to, I want to get to this point because it's, you know, this is, this is, you know, what we set the business up to do. That'd be great to hear if you can expand on that. Um, I've read a book, probably about six months ago, called The Ten X Rule by a gentleman called Grant Cardone, and it's all about goal setting, and the fact that if 
if I say to myself, for example, I want Nosy Design to ha have five members of staff by, near, by the end of 2019, and I write that down and I try to work towards that. Yeah. Instead, if I 10x that and I say, I want Nosy Design to have 50 members of staff by that time, and try my hardest to work towards that, I'm not going to get to 50, yeah. but I might get to 10, yeah. 12, 13. So that's kind of been my uh, my main goal and setting setting up goals in general as a starting business, in my opinion, is quite important. I totally agree. You yeah. are setting yourself up for, I mean, I write my goals down every day. Yeah. And one of mine is I want to employ 15 members of staff. I want to become one of the leading marketing providers in Hampshire where it comes to video design or websites. Yeah. And I want the 15 members of staff to come to work every day and think, yes, yeah, they want I to want to be work. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wanting to come to work. Yeah. There's, there's mm. a crazy statistic I think I've read. It was 85% of people in the UK do not like their job. Yeah. And it's, it blows my mind to, to do that. And again, coming back to what I said earlier, I think that's one of my main goals for, for business, to d create a company which ticks that 15% box yeah, yeah. and provides. And so, I mean, culture and, yeah, what was it, what was, the, what was this, the, the statement? People don't leave jobs, they leave toxic environments, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and if you've got a really good job in a really good environment and the people are nice to you and, and you're actually all focused, then you're going to have a great business. You know, if you're kind of bashing people over the head from the top and screaming and shouting, they're not going to stay. You know, and it's important to understand that every person is different and everyone's motivated by different yeah. things. Yeah. And, and you manage every single person differently. Yeah. I mean, all of my hires so far, we didn't hire for skill, we hired for attitude. Yeah. Because you can teach skill, yeah. but totally. attitude is yeah. just, you know, yeah. either someone is motivated yeah. or they do not want to be there. Yeah. I've, I've, had, I've, I've, I've interviewed people over the, sort of the last 10 years and they've had all of the skills in the world, they've had all of the, you know, they could have done this job inside out and upside down, but they weren't gonna fit with the team, so. <coughs> okay, so let's have a look at... Um, Hang on a minute, I'm gonna have a staring competition with the audience. <laughs> we weren't even on that camera, so. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, I've got a staring competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one's ever done that before. You're the first. <laughs> right, okay, so let's expand on some of the services that you offer mm -hmm. right now. Um, um, what, how those, uh, how you can offer those to different customers, and you know what type of customer you're looking to work with, um, and the uh, sort of end goal. Uh, you know those services are right now. What what services do you want to kind of look at in the future? So, we currently offer. It's probably around, I'd say, thirty three percent each. Websites, social media, and video. We do a bit of promotional print design as well, but that's the right. key three. And the nice thing about those is most businesses nowadays need social media, most businesses nowadays need video yeah. to go on that social media, and most businesses nowadays need a website. So it just works nicely together, and that's the kind of customers which we are looking for. So I want to become a kind of a one-stop marketing provider for a business which I start to work with. And what Nosy Designs Ethos is, we want to go into the shoes and step in and walk around of yeah. both the company and the customers which right. they provide. So hospitality, I've worked in hospitality and that's sure. why it was one of my main focuses to start off with, targeting bars, etc. My next one is at the moment probably going to be more corporate. Yeah. So we work with companies like Top Mops, Beta Pack, Island Tea and Coffee, Spear Recruitment. There's a lot of different ones which we kind of are trying to um, target but in that same field. Yeah. And doing that has been probably one of my you know, best decisions so far. Because at the start, it was kind of, I want a street surgeon, I want that bricklayer, I want this uh, coffee shop, and I want that cleaning company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we weren't able to kind of get good at any industry. Right. But doing kind of step by step <coughs> yeah, has yeah. helped to build it. Yeah, good stuff. Um, what's your thoughts on, I mean, you didn't mention PR in that mix. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously that's kind of a, a key thing and um, the, the whole concept of PR and public relations has changed a lot since social um, social media and, and, and the web as a whole so uh, are you looking to do kind of uh, like a PR service are you, do, you, do you help with that I'm very conscious that I'd rather be great at three things instead yeah. of being good at ten things Okay. so 
if we're going to go into PR, it'd probably be outsourced and managed by us. Right. But again, it's kind of changing slowly from being just nosy design to nosy marketing or nosy marketing agency. Yeah. Some, again, it's that connotation of nosy design. Okay, it's good, but if I go to the mainland and I say to a new business which has never interacted with me, hi, I'm nosy design, they're going to automatically think, graphic designers, website designers. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. I want to, so it's, you know, it's design and marketing, isn't it? It's, yeah. you know, a lot, a lot of it for me is about, like I said, going to customers' shoes and, and realising, well, actually, what do they get attracted to? If I'm going to make a social media post and they're going to scroll through the Facebook over across maybe a day, a hundred, what's going to make my, my post for that company yeah. stand out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people forget that when people are scrolling on their phones through Facebook or Instagram, they're alone. Yeah. So it's not, you're not trying to, it's not, it's not like you're speaking to a big audience you're speaking to a single person and you have to kind of target something that works for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah no, I, 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 I've been doing a lot of research recently and I'm one of the, you know, as previous I was like, you know, just blasting things out as if I'm, you know, blasting it out to an audience and now I'm writing things for LinkedIn and for, for kind of Twitter and things that are very much more target that someone might find. Some different. of it, some of it comes from general culture of radio and TV. Yeah. When you make a radio or TV ad, you're, doing everyone yeah, yeah. When, you make a fa- when you make a Facebook ad you can literally target Susan who has a dog and buys uh, cat food yeah. and she will see that and people yeah. like her will see that and you'll get more results from reaching 10 Susans yeah. than you, because you're selling cat food yeah. than you will from reaching a thousand people but only maybe two of them yeah. want cat food yeah, the idea of dumbing it down for yeah. masses is, is now that's not social media yeah. you're, you're actually targeting the individual which is uh, which is fascinating. I, you know, I, I'm still I'm still researching. So, give me another couple of years, and I'll probably read all the books. In a um, couple of t- in a couple of years, all the books you've read will become irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, just yeah, keep reading. True. Just keep reading. Um, <clears throat> so, um, before we came on air, we were talking about customers and kind of ethos of the business and, and all of that kind of stuff. And you know, some organisations or some businesses look at, at, at customers how we can make money out of them. Um, you, you said a very important thing to me is, is about working with um, kind of customers in a way that they get benefit from what you do. So can you expand a bit on that? Everyone, every business has a problem of, I need more customers. And, you know, if I go to a business and I say to them, look, you give me 100 quid and you get 100 quid back in customers, it's not good enough anymore. No. So it has to be that value for money. But one of the things which I'm kind of trying to promote within the staff and within the general business is we go the extra mile so you know I've I've done websites for customers at one in the morning and I've done social media posts way and far beyond I've, I've actually been involved in videos yeah. and so have the staff members so that whole concept of going the extra mile I think now in this overcrowded market is quite important what makes me different from Joe Blogs over there sure. who makes website so what makes me different from that guy over there that has logos on Fiverr it's that customer interaction yeah. you know saying to them How, how's your daughter doing uh, blah 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 what do you actually want to achieve from this website what's your end goal what's your call to action yeah. how can we make sure that we build this in for the future as well so in a year's time will your website still be relevant can we make a plan that will get you relevant for that time yeah. and do you use a, a CMS or are you, are you building from scratch uh, we we <coughs> Okay. To be honest with you, we started building from scratch at the beginning and the island market was just difficult with that. So we moved on to WordPress just yeah. at the moment. Uh, websites, I think at the moment, will stay on WordPress. Yeah. My focus for improvement is going to be videos and better targeted campaigns on social media. Sure, sure. Um, I just thought of a point then that I could ask you. I've, I've, I've kind of completely... Oh, um, no. I was, I was in, in some of the research I was doing, they were, were talking about how social media is actually kind of like a city. And I don't know if you'll agree with me on this because it seemed a, a, fair, a bit fair. It's, it's not a city, it's, it's the world. You know, but if you think of it as, as a kind of city, and the city has, you know, it has bars and restaurants and, and, and parties going on, but it has its mainstream, you know, mainstream kind of shops on the, on the main streets and all of that kind of stuff. And you, you know, in your social world, you're still going to have those big advertisers who are doing it the old way, where they, they kind of push content out, say, buy my thing, I've got a thing, buy my thing. But you wouldn't go to a party 
and say, oh, hi, you know, I'm, I'm you know, Nosley Design, you know, I can build you a website. You would kind of introduce yourself and you'd have a conversation. And it's, it's the need for, I guess, the more we consume technology and the more we implement technology in our businesses and in, in our general lives, that we all crave that kind of human interaction. And I think as a business owner, being able to kind of just sit down, have that conversation and say, hey, what is it you want to do? Where is it you want to go? Forget the technology. Well, I'm not here to kind of sell you some technology. What, what's the end goal? Where, where are we going? And I think that is so important and, uh, and will be over the next decade. I think business will change quite a lot in, in, that, in that direction. I suppose if you ask me to define Nosy Design in a sentence, I wouldn't say Nosy Design is a marketing agency. I would say Nosy Design helps businesses get more customers. Sure. And like I said, the only way to do that is to sit down with them and, and figure out what the goals are, yeah. understand the product or service which they are offering. Sure. Excellent. Um, so your end goal, you know, we talked about you know you were ten xing and 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 like fifty staff and all of those kinds of things. But realistically, let's say two years from now, mm-hmm. you know, um, where do you want to be? Uh, I want to have a bigger office, an office dog. Yeah, office dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Um, we want to expand a lot more to the mainland. Sure. In the next kind of you know six months, so I wanted to get the business model right on the Isle of Wight first. And then slowly, you know, infiltrate the different markets, target specific sectors, London, Southampton, Portsmouth, Bournemouth, yeah. Manchester, kind of all the main cities in the UK, and hopefully slowly, word of mouth will spread. Yeah. But in two years' time, if, if you said to me what my ideal situation would be, nice office, 15 staff, a dog, good coffee machine, yeah. and happy staff. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, that's, I mean, we've been going sort of ten years now. And we're, we're kind of at that stage. Well, we're twelve, but you know, we'll be we'll be you know growing. The most important thing is if you reach a goal and you don't set yourself a new one, you'll just go stagnant. So exactly. Yeah, done that. I well. suppose as an overall goal is be better than Matt was a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great. Yeah, and the other thing is, you, you know, you just said it, it's the happy staff thing. I mean, I've looked, I've worked for organisations, bigger organisations, where lots more people doesn't mean a great deal because I've I've worked in organisations where I think more than eighty five percent of the people working in there have been very unhappy. So, you know, it seems to me Matt, that your focus is not just success for the sake of the financial rewards; it's also encouraging and helping other people. That's coming across to me, which is refreshing to see because often younger people than me and most people are younger than me are often just focused on the financial side of it you know start a business and the answer to the where do you want to be in two years is I want this 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 and this it's all monetary possession whereas your focus is very much on other people as much as yourself if, which if, is if, really good if see. your focus is to get money you're not going to get money yeah. because you you will just focus so much on the money and eventually money will just stop coming in something will go wrong and then you turn around you look at your 30 staff and they'll leave you to a different company that has money yeah. but if you make them a part of your family and mm. develop that culture they'll help you out to get out of the hole yeah, yeah exactly mm. really well. um, so as a business I, mean, yeah, I appreciate you've been running uh, a year um, what kind of uh, systems and technology do you have in place to run your business um, now I'm not expecting you to go, well, that's the system, got an ERP system, we're, we're doing all of our planning, full finances is taking control. No, I don't expect that, but what, what do you actually, how do you run your day to day? Is it automated or have you got posting notes everywhere and, and spreadsheets? And <laughs> it's a bit of both, I guess. We try to outsource to technology on things that we can. Sure. So we've got a, a simple project management kind of software which we've utilised called Monday.com. Yeah. Uh, we use things like QuickBooks. We've used things like Trello in the past. A lot of it is about, you know, physical progression of each project and making sure we're, you know, staying on track as much as possible. And also just having that conversation with, hi, this is my designed flyer or poster. What do you think we could improve on this? Yeah. You can do this, this, and that. Okay, great. And it's just having that trail to see where we developed from and how can we use that specific thing for for the future as well to not make the same mistakes. Yeah. So technology, uh, automation, things like, well, obviously calendars are really important to us. Yeah. But for every business, we just we use G Suite. Yeah. You'd uh, be surprised actually how many, how many companies don't have um, a staff calendar and, and know where all their appointments are and what everybody's doing. Hmm. Um, I mean, we, we've got a, a solution, we show it to them, they go, oh, 
that's great. <laughs> So, so it's, it's, it's refreshing to hear. Um, you're saying kind of Monday.com, that's obviously quite a popular thing at the yep. moment. It's growing a lot of, a lot of marketing. They're doing online. great marketing yeah, campaigns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge, huge amount of marketing online. It's, I think every YouTube video is tagged. How do you find it? Because you know, we're looking to kind of integrate that into the back end of Mapsumize as well, because obviously it's got customer data. Um, I found it very visual, and for a design company, all my guys love that. Yeah. So as soon as you complete a task, you can click the different things, you can slide stuff along. Yeah. Uh, you can set up automatic reminders to your email address. You can set up kind of, you know, Matt, this person has completed X task, can you please review it? Yeah. And that goes straight to my email address, you know, it keeps everything in one place. Excellent. Yeah. And talking about automation actually, um, we use something called Buffer for social media, similar to Hootsuite, similar to other yeah. kind of things out there. But that's been so useful. Because instead of having to, you know, I say manually, but when it comes to re the review process, for so me as the as the manager of the staff, if someone creates a social media post, I want to just make sure it's it's correct for the client. Sure. So Buffer just saves me so much time because we can schedule the post and it goes into my approval box. I've got my list of things I need to look over. Yeah. I can make notes of them. I can change them directly. Schedule and off it goes out mm -hmm. to all the social media networks that it needs to. Yeah, excellent. Um, do you want to jump in, Poppy, and have a look at some of the the because because um, Zoe's joined us. Yeah, on, right? and it's like we've got Zoe. Um, hi, Zoe. <laughs> uh, she says, well, she clearly uses uh, Love Monday. Uh, I mean Monday, not sorry. She says she loves Monday. Yeah. Um, she's the only person. That she doesn't Monday. like cheesy when yeah. she says she's on yeah, Fridays. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> she <laughs> thinks any day she likes. One. Maybe she doesn't work Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Quote from Steve Jobs: It's not faith in technology; it's faith. Yeah, that's in a good. That's a good, good yeah. quote. That one. And people uh, created technology. Oh. <laughs> I like the one from Steve Jobs actually that sort of says this: This company only has two departments. One is one is one is uh, one is development, and the other one is sales. If you're not in one of those, you don't work here. And that's what people. <coughs> I think that's one of the key things for a small business starting is you need to get more customers. Yeah. You can have a, you can have the perfect product. You can spend you know two years building something. If no one buys it, you're gonna go out of business. Yeah, yeah. Don't and it's that whole kind so of. Let me let me ask a question about yeah. that because um, social media is great for organic. You can do really nice posts. You can you can actually you know there's lots you can do with it. But you can also do paid ads. Yeah. Um, do you have any preference over? kind of paid ads versus organic? Would you do a sort of say, we'll do 20% of paid and 80% organic? Or um, do you have a preferred kind of direct and say, well, we should start on Twitter or we should start on Facebook or does it depend on the business? It depends on the business, but one thing which I'm very aware is, especially for LinkedIn and Facebook has already kind of got there as well. When big businesses like Coca-Cola and Nike added this, realize the potential of paid advertising on social media and how much screen time people actually, you know, on the train, sure. even even one, well, you know, whilst driving sometimes, yeah. not safe. <laughs> uh, how much time they spend on the phones, they'll start investing more and more money into that kind of advertising, which yeah. Facebook will see that and think, hmm, I can put the prices up now. LinkedIn yeah. will see that and it's gonna become a lot more difficult for a small business to advertise on social media effectively. Yeah, You can see already on Facebook, 10 quid for a, for a, like Isle of Wight reach to advert for yeah. a bar, would you, you know, would get you maybe six, seven thousand people. Yeah. Now it only gets you one to two thousand. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, is, it is changing. But yeah, we've noticed that as well. One thing which I say to clients is, do a little test run. So before you boost or you you know advertise anything, do some organic posts, and if people react well to an organic post then you can boost it. Yeah. There's no point of doing an untested advert on something that might not work. Yeah. If you can do a test that, I don't know, if you're a company that sells tea and coffee and you can see that uh, coffee facts do well, why not boost it and attract clients that you know get attracted in that and just make it a bigger audience? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, I think we've tried, or Pop has been trying lots of the different variations of Facebook. Yeah. Uh, posting you know, from Boost all the way up to brand awareness and, and form capture and all of those kind of things as well. It's, it's an interesting topic when it comes to as well which social media networks to use. If, I'm, if, if, if you say to me, for example, wh which ones are top ones, I'm going to say Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, maybe Snapchat, I've always been dying a bit. 
but everyone else thinks the same thing. Mm. So if I said to you, for example, I'm not going to use Snapchat because it, no one's using it anymore, there's still people using it, and because there's no other businesses advertising on it, yeah. mm. you've got a you know a pond, a smaller pond yeah. of no other fishermen. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. new you know new social media networks will come out in two years' time. There's probably going to be a a different I don't know Facebook. Maybe not Facebook, a different X yeah, yeah. social media network, which will start to grow. That'd, that'd, be, that'd be something. Um, uh, that'd be so it's important to you know, yeah. build your presence as a business as soon yeah. as you can on that. Yeah, mm. d- d- different channels. I mean, we, we studied, um, I say we, Poppy, um, <laughs> on Instagram. And it's surprising how many, you know, just for the, the geotechnology that we're, we're building. And it's surprising how many people have engaged just with the images mm-hmm. that we've, we've put out of, of the mapping software. Um, yeah. And I would have never thought, you know, from an Instagram product that that would even be yeah. a thing. You know, it's just a because thing. all the other business owners, which own similar companies, are thinking the same thing and yeah. not doing it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's a niche in that market. Yeah. yeah. And again, that just proves the point of doing targeted mm. instead of too wide. Yeah. So obviously, as a business, we look at CRM as a whole, um, a business systems as a whole, and geotechnology. Um, I've got to ask you the question, do you have a CRM system? Do you use monday.com for your CRM or do you have... We use monday.com as a CRM, but I'm, I want more. Okay. I need I need more. I'm conscious that I need things like this customer's birthday is today. Or last time we spoke to this customer, they mentioned that uh, they're going on a honeymoon. So next time you call them, you've got that. And Monday, you can you can kind of do that, but it just becomes a bit confusing. Yeah. And it is all, more of a project management. Yeah, it's more of a project management. I, I, think progressing yeah. within the next year I'm either going to invest or find some sort of a way to sure. to use so Mike if you could just book that in <laughs> into the CRM yeah, we've, we've, we've got that on record so yeah. we'll, 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 we'll send uh, we'll send the video in what was that thing I signed earlier by the way right uh, okay so we're about halfway through um, I don't know how long we've been running so yeah we're, we're pretty much on track on time um, so what's the next kind of big thing for you? Uh, what does the next 12 months look like? Um, what do you want to try and achieve? You know, you've got X number of customers now, so is that a goal to double that? Um, is there something new that's happening that you say, well actually we're going to do this new thing, you know, we're going to do video via drones or something. I, I, I'm making it up as I go along. Um, so what, have you got anything that's, that's going to happen that's really cool in the next 12 months? And what's the next big thing in the sort of next five years if you've got a, a plan for that? So when it comes to actual equipment, you know, technology we use and that kind of stuff, so physical things that we yeah. use at the moment, definitely investing in better video equipment. Sure. So we want to get things like a drone, yeah. drone license, even simple things like a cam- camera stabiliser. Right. So like a Ronin, so yeah. when you film it you can actually you know stuff. Yeah. 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 It looks smoother. Yeah. Uh, you know, CRM would be very useful, and I think that's going to be extremely important, especially when we expand to the mainland sure. and get more customers because at the moment I can probably tell you, you know, what's happening to most of my customers yeah. but when we double when we triple yeah, yeah. eventually it's going to become yeah. difficult to keep yeah. it all when in here. Once get up to a couple of hundred it's, it's just like no yeah. I'm, I'm lost now. Yeah I, I, I know that feeling well. Um, you know, do you have any kind of preference for a video camera? You, you're talking about video cameras and things. What yeah so at the moment from? we use um, an A7 Mark II from Sony it's been very good and we got it because it has a good sensor sure. for light so we used to do a lot of film with things like nightclubs bars where the lighting wasn't very good yeah and this camera has a you know it just looks so much smoother yeah. there's no kind of feedback on the footage but it, again because it's quite a heavy lens on it i think the whole thing weighs you know about three kilos yeah mm. it's just difficult to keep it steady right yeah and right. especially when you zoomed in more it just kind of makes it Right. Not trippy. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've, you know, we were when we were setting this up. Mm. I was just like, oh, can I buy three video cameras? And like, it looks really impressive. Yeah, I understand. Uh, they, they were, the, the guys said, well, you don't need to. Just you know, you can use. Ten, you're not going to get more than ten eighty. Mm. You know, I was just like, I want to buy really expensive video cameras, and you know, no. We can have automated cameras moving around as well, so talking. No. <laughs> so, okay. Um, yeah, I, I kind of love the, the the kind of geeky stuff. Um, do you play games? Do you play any video I don't, games? I don't actually. Um, I don't. I, I right. haven't. Thanks. <laughs> no, I, it's not. I, I just don't have. My, my son drives me nuts because he's constantly playing games. He loves geo games. He loves um, a whole. He's the Minecraft wizard. I mean, he's desperate to have a YouTube channel of his own to start broadcasting his own 
sort of game. That's the new job. When you're four yeah. years old nowadays, you don't, yeah, want to be a, you don't want to be a firefighter or a policeman, you want to be a YouTuber. Yeah, 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 yeah. he does want to be a YouTuber. You know, and I'm like, okay, Game of Thousand subscriptions will monetize him, we'll just sit him in a corner, you know. He'll, he'll buy me the new Ferrari. You know. I was subscribed, it's about 10 quid. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now he, uh, yeah, but I'm not, no, I'm not a game player. I, I don't know what it is. Um, I think because I spend all day in front of tech and, and doing things, I, I kind of get home. I don't, so I'm what's, a TV watcher, really. You know. let, let's fast forward 30 years where VR becomes you know, better and yeah. you're able to put goggles on and it's going to feel like Skype. So I'm going to be sat in a room on my own, put my goggles on and I can see you guys where you are. Yeah. Do you think that CRMs will come apart of that? So maybe you're, they record a conversation that you're having and start to put um, input a data into databases and... You know. So the whole, the whole kind of concept of uh, CRM, I've been implementing CRM systems for 10 years and the, although the technology has changed and you can record voice and you can do various different things kind of with them, it actually relates back to the kind of core business activities. So until core business activities change, which is kind of sales, marketing, service, you know, engineering, kind of PR, whatever they be, that's what you're monitoring. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can layer much and much more tech over the top of it, but people still engage in the same way. Yeah, and businesses still engage in the same way. Um, the, the you know, fifteen years ago, I worked for a, a big. It's actually a bit longer than that, but um, I worked for a big American uh, CRM company, and their their process was very defined. I mean, the sales people you know, manage leads from the marketing, but yeah, marketing will go and get leads, hand them over to sales, sales would then do what sales do, and, and then they would that get handed over to the service team. As now, <coughs> because people have got so much more information and are, are able to self-educate, the whole sales, marketing, service element has kind of blurred, really. We're all doing the sort of same job, we're all working. So I think CRMs will change, I think they will change into a being more, much more of a collaborative type platform where everybody can kind of share data and sort of move around. So, well, I see that opportunity, let me get involved with that because I want to send them a, a latest blog post or something from marketing and engineering have worked on something. So they might you know, be interested in this, but the salesperson might be coming in at a different angle. So, um, it's an inter inter interesting thing you said that everything's kind of blurring together. Yeah. And I think that that's why it's important that your business focuses on getting more customers yeah non customer service because in order to get more customers you have to have good customer service because yeah. word spreads yeah, yeah so having that ultimate goal yeah but no no vr no, no. um <laughs> yeah i mean we uh before, the, before we, we set up in here this used to be um uh, my office um we had a couple, a couple of people in there and we had that as the next door as a meeting room um, and we set that up as a vr kind of test bed okay because uh, gareth uh, that, that works is very into kind of his VR and, and we tested all the different headsets mm. um, and I remember taking it off and thinking oh that was amazing that's really cool that's, that's great and sat at my desk and my brain was running through you know, and you felt a bit seasick you know. well wasn't that it was just like are we still in VR is this virtual are we doing email virtually now and I was just like I actually feel quite old <laughs> you know Matrix was released 20 years ago yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah so it's that technology is um is developing rapidly. Uh, I have played with VR headsets, and I do do gaming and fly flight simulators. Mm. So, um, so the interesting thing for me is that although we are heading in that direction, and that's the next big thing, according to lots of big software houses and lots of hardware manufacturers, people still like human interaction. And, uh, and I don't think there'll ever be a time where we're doing business virtually all the time, where we never leave our environments because we don't need to, because we can just go into the virtual world, because people still crave human interaction and human personal touch and personal service. And as your business grows, you'll probably always continue to engage personally with customers, because customers will expect that. They won't probably say, yes, I'll be quite happy if you just we put our devices on and we just engage in a, in, a, in a virtual world. I think we're a long way from that. I think the people trying to push that hardware will push that that, that is the way that it's going to go. But I think that's years and years and years away. I really do. I don't I don't believe we're at the point where if within the next If you think back 30 10, years ago though, would you ever imagine anything like social media now is? Uh, where it's no, because you, you know, uh, coming from an era obviously before mobile phones and before email, 
you know, when I first started working in business, we had uh, telex machines and then fax machines. You 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 couldn't even imagine that that was mm. what was coming. Um, and although you know, I'm I'm very aware of social media. I'm not a big social media person. Um, you know, I still think that we're quite a long way from the potential future that I read about often and you know I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking quite often at uh, what's happening with technology and where we're going you know Microsoft's HoloLens has been around for a long time it is being used in business you know there are engineers out there that have a HoloLens and they might be mending a piece of equipment or building an engine of an aircraft and they have that image in front of them that's overlaid on the actual image that that's fine from that perspective, it's really good, really useful. But from actually interacting with people in a virtual environment, you know, we all jump jump into a meeting room and we've got little avatars, shiny-headed people walking around. You know, I, I think we're a long way off that. I could be completely wrong, of course. We've got 20 years. We'll see you guys soon. Yeah, 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 we'll see. Yeah, yeah, no, I think... Um, yeah, that's. Uh, it depends, I guess it depends on global warming. If it's true, then we're all going to be rocked up in yeah. little meeting rooms. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's move on. Um, this is really a question mainly for either white businesses because we're on an island. Um, you might have not noticed, but yeah. um, do you find? I mean, a lot of businesses when they're starting up or they're kind of moving to an area, they look for a densely populated area so they've got more customers. You know, we we are limited by population. Um, but a lot of island white businesses will go national, will go international. I mean, there's some amazing businesses here that, that trade all over the world, you know, and it has no impact whatsoever being, you know, on this rock. Do you have you identified any kind of challenges um, from working from the Isle of Wight? And, and would, if you were going to do it all again, would you go? Well, actually, no, I'll be in Southampton, or I'll I'll, I'll pick a city. If if I'm to be honest, I don't think the challenges as a technology company. I can do websites from my bedroom, my underwear if I wanted to. I'm not going to, but um, I don't think it's the island or the business. I think it's me. No. I think as a business owner, I just I haven't been ready to make that step or that swim to the mainland. Yeah. Uh, I think slowly we're getting there. Like I said, we're, the the model which we're providing to clients of being that one stop and that you know putting extra for them is working slowly. Sure. So we. We are getting to the point where, like I say, either towards the end of this year, maybe beginning of next one, I'm going to start marketing, probably using social media paid advertising yeah. on the mainland. It's probably different if a company is producing physical products, mm -hmm. shipping. I mean, you try to buy something from Amazon sometimes and they're like, where are shipping out of? I'm sorry. Or extra 20 quid, please. Mm. Yeah. So it's logistics. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. For me, as a te technology company, I think it was more me than the island. Yeah. Uh, challenges probably exist. Yeah. The fact that if you want to work with a client in London, you do have to spend three hours travelling probably each way. Have you um, have you been engaged with the, the council at all on the digital strategy for the Isle of Wight? Uh, do you know about the digital yes, strategy? Yes, yeah. so um, we were involved in uh, you know different kind of events that they did. did. Uh, there was um, a gentleman called Matt Chatfield has introduced us in. Yeah. Well, we've done filming for them, we've been to the conferences that they had yeah. at the Yacht Haven. Yeah. And, you know, it looks interesting, it looks good. Whether it's going to work, hopefully, I do hope so, it's going to make everything easier for us. Yeah, because I think there's, there's a definite real drive to generate more technology businesses here, or design technology, you know, businesses that can work from here that really don't have any challenge not making physical products, so there's no logistics. And I know there's a new, or the planning to look at a new um, innovation hub, um, not an innovation centre, more of an enterprise hub, really. Um, and you know, I think that's going to be based in Cairns, which I hope you know they do. They go ahead with that because it'll give another place. Well, that's one of the key aspects of what the council are trying to achieve: yeah. host events and provide opportunities for young people yeah. to have you know a university course on the island, so they can stay on the island and yeah. grow their business on the island. Yeah. And I think a, a, a hub like that would be great for kind of business, like you're saying. Yeah. I want space, but you know, I can't afford. You know, ten, fifteen thousand pounds a year. Um, obviously, the innovation centre is there, but again, that's that gets still quite expensive for, for you know businesses only in its first twelve months. Um, so you're always you, you know the, the, you've got those challenges because we haven't got a sway of business parks across the island, although there are a few. Um, right, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, 
Right, okay. So let's, we've done the work thing. We've talked about what we can do. What do you do outside of work? What's your, what's your kind of leisure points? I always dread this question because <laughs> I, work, I, I work a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I work a lot. I mean, I always like traveling to see my family in Poland. Sure. I go to the gym sometime. <laughs> no, I'm um, I, I like going to the you know, physical activity. Uh, one thing which we're actually developing now, it's kind of kind of business my kind of isn't, is something called CGI. So Cosplay Gaming Island. All right, yes, I we noticed. we combined four different uh, businesses. So myself from Nosy, Alex from Alex Watts Blog, Martin from Big Screen Media, and Jonathan from PC Consultants. Yeah. So we're all equal directors in, in the limited company. And we provide a whole kind of package so for events. So Martin does the screens, fire, pyro, yeah. audio. We do marketing. Alex does all the public speaking and customer interaction. Yeah. And then Jonathan uh, knows people. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan is actually coming in to do a show, actually. Ah, brilliant. Point. Yes. Um, he, he has kind of given me the nod the other night. I said, yeah, I'll come, I'll come and talk to you for a bit. So. Um, but anyway, so CGI, we've done two events so far at the Cows Enterprise College. All right. It's all been kind of outside of business. Yeah. And the whole focus is uh, you know, cosplay and gaming. Yeah. So we're getting people from all different backgrounds to come in, dress up, play games on a five meter screen, try out VR. And it's been very good so far. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's uh, you know, I say if I can, uh, I'll deliver my son to you and he'll, he'll, he'll show you how to play. We've well, we'll got a laser quest event on Saturday, if you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so, um, as a local business, um, and obviously there are, you know, there's the activity that the council's uh, involved with, with Digital Island and looking to, to help businesses, there's the FSB, there's the Chamber of Business. Um, do you get involved with those or do you find that you know just networking events in general I mean obviously we both go to LinkedIn local that was a you know a great opportunity you know well attended do you go to any others do you, is there anything you can recommend yeah I mean um, I can't personally go to it because there's already people in that industry there but IBN is very good on a business network yeah. all the chamber stuff they've helped me out a lot I've sure. actually, I actually got a lottery loan to buy some of my Macs oh, when right. I was starting out, okay. which again helped the expansion process and getting new staff, yeah. and allowing them to work on something. Do you want to just expand on the, the kind of chamber loan then, the lottery loan? Yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, I got it's interest free, isn't it? It then? was it was very it was one of those you know I was it feels like a godsend moment. I was sitting there thinking, right, I need a new computer, and a chamber like a little newsletter came in through my email that said you can get up to £5,000 from the chamber for new equipment. And I thought, wow, okay, brilliant. So I applied, uh, went through the application process. Uh, it, you know, it was, it was a bit of legwork. You have to kind of provide your figures. You have to provide what you're going to spend that money on. Go in and speak to eight scary lady. They weren't scary. <laughs> and uh, the, you know, the money helped me to get uh, free Macs yeah. uh, and partially pay for a new camera as well, sure. which then allowed to, you know, employ the apprentice, Ollie, mm. and so expand the business. So it was very useful, and I, th I think there's still got some money to give away, so. Yeah. I'm not sponsored, I'm not gonna get. No, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of always interested in people, you know, that, that have gone down that yeah. path, because we, well, I mean, we started with kind of investor funding, that's kind of all been paid back now, um, but we didn't go down the loan route here and borrow. I mean, cash flow and getting equipment at, at the beginning is, is just difficult. Yeah. Because you haven't got that customer base yet, but you need the equipment, or, the facilities or whatever that is to get that customer base, mm. and that's the that's the kind of how do we get started? Yeah. you know, you've got to start with a bucket of cash. Yeah. You know? So the chamber is very good. Uh, I think you can get some stuff from the council as well. Uh, when we were with Isle Create, we got a, a grant from the Solent LEP right. as well as Southampton, yeah. and a lot of other businesses did on the island. So yeah. there's different methods. Of just you know, research it. Yeah. And for a small business starting out, I definitely encourage try to get a mentor of some sort. Or even several mentors in different fields. Yeah. Well, you, know, well, you don't realise how many different things there are that you have to do. I thought I'm going to go in and start making websites. Then things like payroll, pensions, insurance, make sure you've got a health and safety policy come in, yeah. uh, contracts, accounting. It's just so many different things yeah. when you're like, Employment Bleh. contracts. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of the things, you know, and it's just, just like, where's my checklist? Well, why didn't anybody tell me this? You know, it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing some videos on that actually shortly. Uh, not today. Um, <clears throat> right, okay, so we're going to go on to the quick fire round. Um, I think we've been running uh, 
think we're on time. 55 minutes now. Yeah, yeah, yeah apparently. Moving along. Your internet hasn't broken, has it? It's the thing of the load thing. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It says we're live. It says we're, we've just frozen. Is that when you went like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, right, so um, I can't actually remember the questions. Yeah, that's. <laughs> right. no, 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 no. Is there anything else you want to share before we go on to the quick fire round? Anything you kind of think that you know, people might want to hear about? If you're a, which camera are we looking at? Should I look at that oh, one? Oh, yeah, go for this one. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a, you know, a young person on the Isle of Wight who's thinking about starting a marketing business, websites, video, social media. You can always send me an email and I'll be a, you know, happy to give you a hand. Matt and those designer code UK. N O S Y D design. And don't ask me about why that name. <laughs> That's it. Excellent stuff. Quick fire round. at me. Quick fire round. Uh, what's your favourite film and why? Uh, the Matrix, actually. And it's been one of those kind of. My parents showed me. I absolutely loved it and it stuck mm. with me for the whole childhood. Not really keen on the third one, but the first two I so love. I quite like the third one. Uh, what's your favourite sport? Uh, I don't really watch any sports, but if I had to say favorite favorite sports, it's probably MMA, mixed martial arts. Hmm. Right, okay. Mine would be Formula One, but you know, <laughs> well, not at the moment. The season <laughs> a bit, it's a bit dull at the moment. MMA is <laughs> much more exciting than the Formula One at the moment. In fact, probably will always be a bit more exciting. Yeah, probably. It does sound a bit like a, a drama show, but uh, MMA is very good. Uh, I like MMA. Can you recommend a good book for business and why? Uh, be Obsessed or Be Average by Grant Cardone. I've probably listened to it about five times over now. And as a starting a business, to be successful, especially at the beginning, you need to put in the legwork, you need to work hard, but also be aware of which areas you need to be working hard in. Sure. Because you could work for you know 20 hours per day on the wrong things, and you're not going to get as much results. So it's a very good book, and it keeps you, you know, motivated and driven. Sure. So it's the work, work smart, not. You know, work yeah, yeah. for me, it's both work smart and work hard. Yeah. But yeah. I don't want to be working hard and not getting results. Exactly. Um, so if you were starting over again, what's the one thing you would change? The name. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you really don't like your name, do you? I would start sooner. Start I wish. Sooner. I wish I started when I was 18. Right. And failed, maybe even failed twice. But yeah. I wish I had that experience under my belt. Yeah. Straight up and, you know, understood why I understand now, two or three years ago. Yeah. So, uh, single piece of advice that you give anybody who's starting up businesses? Uh, don't forget to keep learning. Because things change, and especially in my industry, I said this to you a few times in this interview, yeah. <clears throat> in two, three years' time, everything's going to be different. Totally agree. Keep learning. Uh, can can't do more of it. People get kind of complacent and, and they feel a bit safe, they feel a bit cushy. They go yeah. to play golf and then suddenly you realise that your competition has outworked you, outsmarted yeah. you. Yeah, I mean there's that whole kind of loop, isn't there? Yeah. That says if you fall over the side then you're in decline. Um, right. Do you think running this channel and these interviews are for Ireland and not just our white businesses but for other businesses because we've got other people into it. Do you think it's beneficial? Should we carry on? I think it's very beneficial. I think what you should do is two things, and I said this to you yeah. at the beginning. One, start answering some targeted questions. So, for example, if we did a title for this interview, top five things that a new starting business could do yeah. to improve. So, when you're doing your search results, then you start coming up for those things that people type in. And two is add some con continuity. So maybe inv invite an 18-year-old who's just starting their own business, uh, check them in with them six months down the line, a year down the line, All right. <coughs> to get some you know people yeah. people coming back to it. Yeah, cool. and I think uh, you know also you were, you were mentioning about workshops as well as you know we do demonstrations of how to achieve something. I mean we can sit around and we can talk about the top five things of you know yeah get your contracts in place, do this, do this, do this. But actually, how do I build a website from scratch, you know, and, and run through that kind of process? Because you recently did an event at the Chamber, didn't you? Yes, so actually on Monday we had eight different businesses attend and we built a website from scratch, again on WordPress. But also kind of went through the process. If you're a you know, not techie person, yeah. but you need to get your website up because you haven't got much of a budget, what options do you have? Which one should you go for? What's the benefits and drawbacks of each one? Sure. So we went through that and the demonstration. And things like that are good. People walk away, you know, 
with more than they came in with. Sure. So what, what do you think would help local businesses? What, what, what's the one thing that, you know, from an Isle of Wight perspective, you know, either council or chamber or FSB or, you know, Smart Island or whatever it is, what would be the one thing that sort of says, you know, actually that would be really good for either technology businesses or design or, or, or whatever? Uh, an online forum which and asked people to ask mentors uh, for advice. Yeah. Interactive, going to be very difficult to set up. Uh, people not want to get involved because it's good PR and also they're giving back something to the community. Sure, totally agree. Cool. Islementor.com. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were, as I, I think I said before we uh, we came on, um, we were thinking of taking the business show into that kind of uh, website type of environment. You know, for PR marketing, everybody just use it as a kind of central. I think it'd be brilliant if you did a. Uh, let's say you do a workshop, uh, a podcast with Jonathan from PC Consultants yeah. next week, and then maybe a month down the line, you offer people the option to actually meet him and ask questions themselves on a yeah. kind of event basis. Oh, right. So maybe like once every six months, invite everyone you've interacted with on this show yeah. to do like a mini my CRM meetup. Like the hustings. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fight. No. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? It'd be like. Yeah, okay. So can you recommend, apart from just mentioning Jonathan there, because I know uh, he said he wanted to come on, can you recommend anyone else uh, that should come on the show? <sighs> you've, you've, mentioned, you've already had a few people which I would, so Carl Crowley would definitely yeah. be one of them. Uh, Kai, again, he's very involved in the community. Sure. I think it would be good if you've got my colleague Alex to come in. He's in America now, but his angle is... And neurodiversity so he has ADHD and he, he works with people who have kind of different you know either syndromes or you know, disabilities or some way or another exactly. so getting that angle would be useful sure. maybe um uh IO access Janet so again she deals with people who Jan sorry not Janet Jan Brooks from right. IO access I don't know her, but. she uh, she helps businesses to become more accessible on the island so it'd be good to get her perspective of especially with the technology, how people yeah. can make things more accessible. Sure, that would be really interesting, we'll make a note of that. Um, okay, final question. Um, Andrew uh, from Y Computers. <laughs> final question, um, how can people get hold of you? Which camera should I look at? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to hold me, you can grab by, by my shoulder. <laughs> It's Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, at Nosy Design, N-O-S-Y, design.co.uk. You can visit our website, www.nosydesign.co.uk. Follow us on social media. We're going to be doing a lot more you know, interactive stuff and little kind of blogs soon as well on the subject of social media websites and videos and how those can impact your business in a positive way. 07587 691 494, no calls past midnight. Okay. Matt, it's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, that brings the show to a close. Um, that was Matt Greg from Nosy Design. No, you know you pronounced it wrong then. <laughs> yeah, it's Matt from Malfi Design. No, no, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Nosy, Nosy <laughs> Design. Um, so, yeah, we're going to wrap up now. Um, I hope that's been really good. There's been a couple of people online. Uh, Do you want to raise? Um, yeah, thank you for coming on, Zoe. Um, you know, in future, please do everyone get involved. You know, ask your questions. Um, Zoe's been very uh, interactive with us today, so thank you for that, Zoe. Um, so yeah, do follow us. Um, we're having new businesses come on every week for May now. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got. Who's it coming next week? Rosetta, uh, Mike Cox. Mike Cox ah. and Rosetta is in next yeah. week. We don't work them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's so please good. follow us, um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Okay, so we'll see you next week. Uh, I'm Alice Stevenson. We've got Mike, Poppy, Goodbye. and you forgot my name. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Matt from Nose Design. <laughs> Any questions uh, asked after this live feed may still be charged. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good night from him. Yeah. Should do a slow mo yeah. like handshake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so let's wrap it up. This is a business and technology show. We'll we'll see you next time. Bye. Which camera? Bye. 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 <laughs>